We have seen that a line in three-dimensional space can be defined using a point on the line and a parallel direction vector. We also know that the vector equation of a line is given by r of t equals r0 plus tv. We have also seen that a line in two-dimensional space can generate a plane when extended to three-dimensional space. But how do we get a mathematical description of a plane? Well, for a line, we were able to do this using a point and a direction vector. So maybe for a plane, we can do something similar, using a point on the plane and a vector parallel to the plane to describe its orientation in space. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's start with a point R0 that sits on some line that is supposed to be contained in our plane. Now let's throw in a direction vector V that is parallel to the line and thus parallel to the plane also. This seems fine so far, and maybe we can already envision the plane this describes. So mission accomplished, right? Well, not quite. Although we've gotten a plane that meets all the criteria we specified, we actually haven't pinned down a unique plane. It turns out there are infinitely many planes parallel to a given direction vector. All we have to do is rotate our plane about the direction vector v to obtain a different, but equally valid, plane satisfying our criteria. So we haven't actually succeeded in fully describing the plane's orientation. So how do we fix this? There are actually multiple ways we can modify this scheme so that it pins down a unique plane with a unique orientation. Here's one common way. Instead of trying to describe a plane using a vector parallel to the plane, use a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. Now the plane can no longer rotate without ceasing to be perpendicular to our vector, and so its orientation is fixed in space. We now have a unique plane. Okay, great! So we have a scheme that describes a unique plane. But just like with lines, how do we turn this scheme into an equation? First, a bit of terminology. The vector perpendicular to our plane that describes its orientation is called a normal vector. In math, the word normal is basically a synonym for perpendicular. Let's label it with the letter n. Okay, now let's consider an arbitrary point r on the plane. Then this green vector, connecting r to the base point r0, is the vector r minus r0. Now, since both r and r0 are points on the plane, it means the green vector r minus r0 must lie completely on the plane. And since our normal vector n is perpendicular to the entire plane, it must also be perpendicular to our r minus r0 vector. But we have a way to algebraically indicate that two vectors are perpendicular. It means their dot product is zero. And that gives us the vector equation of a plane. n dot r minus r naught is equal to zero. We can turn this into a more traditional looking equation if we write out these vectors in component form and simplify. Let's say our normal vector n has components a, b, c, and we'll write out the components of r and r naught as x, y, z, and x0, y0, z0, respectively. Let's plug them into our vector equation. Now we'll subtract the two vectors in the brackets, component by component. This leaves us with a, b, c, dotted with the vector x minus x0, comma, y minus y0, comma, z minus z0. Now remember, to compute the dot product of two vectors, we multiply respective components and add the results. So a goes with x minus x0, b goes with y minus y0, and so on. And so at last, we get our final equation. a times x minus x0, plus b times y minus y0, plus c times z minus z0, equals zero. And this is a pretty standard equation used to describe a plane.